it. Okay. And so far, no reaction from the White House to controversial comments by a key architect of President Obama's health care law. The comments in a video that surfaced last weekend were actually made at an academic conference last year. There, MIT professor Jonathan Gruber suggested the health care law pass because of, quote, the stupidity of the American voter. Lack of transparency is a huge political advantage. And basically, you know, call it the stupidity of the American voter or whatever. But basically, that was really, really critical to getting the thing to pass. And, you know, it's the second best argument. Look, I wish Mark was right. We could make it all transparent. But I'd rather have this law than not. So it's kind of like his reporter story. You know, yeah, there's things I wish it could change, but I'd rather have this law than not. Yesterday here on MSNBC, the professor apologized for those remarks. The comment in the video were made at an academic conference. I was speeding off, speaking off the cuff, and I basically spoke inappropriately, and uh, I regret having made those comments. And joining me live now, Jennifer Habercorn, health care reporter for Politico. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Great to be with you, Tamara. Let's first start off with the timing of the release of these comments. They happened last year. They surfaced over the weekend. Why now are we hearing these? Well, the Supreme Court last week said that they're going to hear a case that really decides whether the tax subsidies in the health law should go to everybody. And Jonathan Gruber, um, he claims to be one of the architects of the law. He worked on it, and he said that these subsidies sh uh, were designed to uh, kind of be a lure for states to set up their own exchanges. So uh, opponents of the law, you know, really seized on Gruber's comments, even though they were made a year ago, and, set, and they're going to use that in the Supreme Court, and they're going to use it, you know, with the American voter. You know, voters don't like to hear that they're stupid and that the White House or uh, uh, people working with the White House were trying to take advantage of stupidity to get a controversial health law passed. And, and to your point, let's talk about his role. We've, I've heard key architect. I've heard, as you pointed out, I think uh, in your remarks, so-called key architect. What role did um, he actually play and what access did Gruber have to the president and key aides? Well, he he really got into the uh, national health care law because he worked on the Massachusetts law with Mitt Romney. And uh, he uh, is a professor at MIT, so he was really involved in getting that program set up. And as we remember, the federal health care law was based in part on the Massachusetts law. So he was brought in. He, uh, you know, definitely advised uh, some of the uh, lawmakers who worked on the law. But, you know, there's Democrats on Capitol Hill that, um, you know, have said the exact opposite of what Gruber said um, a couple weeks ago. Ago, uh, Henry Waxman, Sandy Levin, Max Baucus, um, uh, the, the people who you know put had their names on the legislation said the exact opposite of what he said, and that the law was designed for tax subsidies to go to everybody regardless of where they live. Uh, let me play a little bit more of what Gruber had to say uh, with Ronan Farrow uh, regarding how he at least attempted to explain these remarks. Public policy that involves spending is typically less politically palatable than policy that involves doing things for the tax code. Uh, it would have made more sense to do Obamacare the way we did in Massachusetts, which would be to just actually give people money to offset the cost of their health insurance. That was politically infeasible. Mm. Uh, and so instead it was done through the tax code. And that's the only point I was making. So again, that's more of the explanation there. What have you heard on Capitol Hill as people digest what was said and to your point, discuss what the Supreme Court may or may not do now that they've taken up uh, more of the health care uh, law? You know, I think certainly the White House and the Justice Department, as they prepare to defend Obamacare in the Supreme Court for the third time, and this time on a, a really significant issue that could impact the future of the health care law, I think they'd, you know, hope to put a gag order on Jonathan Gruber if they could, because this is the second time he's said something controversial along these lines. He's, you know, taking credit for writing the law and then saying exactly the opposite of what the White House would want him to say. Um, so, you know, I think I think they'd love if he would just stop talking. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and, you know, uh, Democrats are used to defending the Affordable Care Act, and um, I, I think they're going to feel even more on the defensive with uh, the Supreme Court taking up this case and a Republican majority in both houses. Um, they know that the next two years they're going to spend defending the law against repeal votes on the Hill and in the Supreme Court, and they're going to have to, you know, step up their defense. All right. Thank you very much. Obviously, this is a hot topic, and we'll see what the White House says. Our comments coming from the White House here probably um, a little bit later today. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.